Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Testing Money Bikes. I'm your friend Amur Shaktivel. Uh, in this video, we are going to see about how we can create Android test and what kind of Android locator strategy that we could follow. Right? Uh, I have I have passed this series for a bit, imagining like people are not following it properly. Um, and I also had other plans of creating this similar master framework with selenide, selenium, and selenide APM. So I didn't, you know, uh, put a lot of efforts in completing this. But when I see a lot of comments and people asking me to continue the series, I thought I will do it. Um, you know, so this is why uh, we will start up creating an Android test. If you haven't watched how to create a web test, please watch the previous videos. I have covered them in detail. Uh, in this video, we will uh, cover an Android test. Okay. So the application that I'm going to take is API demos, uh, like the Android uh, app dot APK that we normally get from APM uh, website. So this is how this looks like. Um, so this is the app and uh, you can click on it anywhere. And then it looks something like this. Okay. So what you are going to do is we are going to automate, uh, let's say after clicking on views, I need to scroll till this and then click on web view. So uh, this is a very basic scenario I know, but I could not develop uh, an app myself. So that's, I am using some of the apps that are already built. So if you have any doubts, feel free to ask them. I will try to clarify. But I will try to cover the scrolling part, which is quite, kind of tricky in APM uh, in the next video. So if you have any specific questions or any specific uh, you know, um, scenario that you want to automate, please let me know. Okay. So good. So now we are going to click on that and we are going to scroll here and then check web view is present or whatever. Or we want to click on web view and then we want to go here and do something here. Okay. Whatever. So the first step is, um, let's go here. Uh, previously, we have just pages. Um, what I did is I created a folder called web and then moved everything related to web inside this. And I created a folder called mobile and I created a few classes to save some time. For example, um, so this is the mobile homepage. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll move a bit. So now I hope it will be clear. So I have created mobile homepage. Um, to indicate this is mobile because we also have a home page in web. Um, yeah, so if you notice, so this is what I'm treating it as a home page. In the home page, first I want to click on views. Uh, and so I have created elements two ways. One is using the find by annotations that is coming from the APM. Um, it is cool, uh, it looks much readable. But the problem this one is, uh, you know, when you try to scroll uh, with, with mobile element in hand, there is not much you can do like, you know, the scrolling will be a little tricky. And then if you are testing an app built using Flutter or Ionic or you know some, some apps that are not natively built, then you will face the stale element reference exception as well. So it is it is better to avoid using this. Again, the another problem is you cannot use dynamic locators. You, you have to initialize your page factory. There is a lot of complexity involved, uh, but still you can use them if you want. But in my case, I'm not going to use this. So let me remove it, okay? So now um, I want to find a locator for Android. So what do we normally do is we use APM inspector and then when you try to click on anything, it gives you the, um, you know, the accessibility ID. If you have the accessibility ID, that is the best way to find an element uh, or you can use XPaths or other locating strategies like you wish. But in this case, there is accessibility ID and then I'm using mobile by dot accessibility. The important thing that we need to understand is uh, if you use by, you will not get, uh, you know, the accessibility ID or IDs that are very specific to mobile. So it is always recommended to use mobile by in order to create your mobile locators. Okay. So I'm using accessibility ID and then accessibility area use. So it will find it here. Let's say this is an app that is also available in the IOS. Unfortunately, it is not available in this case, but if your application is, is having, you know, same screen, same navigation for both Android and IOS, you can name it as views underscore Android. For iOS, you could also uh, you could also create one more locator, and then you can treat this as views underscore iOS. Okay, so now here it can be anything like you can use XPath to find it. Okay, maybe it uses some kind of XPath, something like this. Okay, name uh, char at the rate name equal to views, whatever. So it can it can be in something like this. Yeah, so you can create like this and, and you can use it. 
we will come back to this later but yeah so first we will try to make sure this is working so i found this and then i already have created wait and click method so which is like driver dot find element uh, you know by whatever the by that we pass and then we use click right so i'm not separating the uh, apm utils and selenium utils here because they are all using by locators that is also one more advantage like you can directly operate on by element so even this mobile by class whatever the method that you call inside this by class they all going to return you uh, if you notice they are all going to return you by class okay any any locating strategy that you use is going to return you by so it's going to make your life much much easy okay so now uh, i am going to wait and click for the, click this element and then it's going to return me mobile sweep page i mean mobile sweep page you can also use something like this but we are we already decided we are not going to use page for click and here i am using dynamic locator strategy because if you notice all the elements here they all will have same accessibility id like you know the accessibility is id is, is their text itself okay if you open this it go anywhere accessibility id is exactly the text itself okay switches is exactly the text okay so in this case instead of creating 100 elements you can create a dynamic element something like percentages okay so this is i am naming it as view screen element and uh, i'm doing string dot format whatever the string that i have replace the percentage yet yes with the name that i pass so if i go to my test i say click view screen element and then web view which means it has to click on web view so the web view is actually down here so it will obviously fail let's see how, how it fails and also one more thing that i want to give uh, is let's say we are naming our web pages as pages but these are actually not pages they are actually screens right technically uh, if you if you want to distinguish between them so it's obviously good if you want to rename this to mobile home screen instead of that if you know we can denote them by screen we can call it screen home screen is better than uh, home, mobile home page okay and then you can go here you can also rename this to get home screen get home screen instance right and uh, yeah that's like navigate to view space can be renamed to navigate to view screen so this you can separate them you know in web we call it as pages in mobile we call it as screens like there is no wrong but it's it's much better to do this way okay people can understand like you know coding really well you you care about clean coding and the naming conventions okay so view screen is now pretty good right Let's go here now. If you notice, get home screen instance, navigate to view screen, and then I'm doing this. Okay, let's try to run it and then see what's happening. So I have my APM server running. I have device ready. Let's see. Okay. So I clicked on that first element, but it's not clicking on the web view because it is not obviously in the um. It's not obviously in the screen okay we need to scroll to click it okay another one important thing that we need to, need to notice is when we launch the android driver if you don't give android driver here and if you are generally using the remote web driver implementation okay in these cases the the okay the same test will fail okay let's try to run it again i'll tell you what is the failure the same test would fail now somehow launching it android manager so if you notice it is telling uh, you are trying to do something but it is not impossible to find something what is saying you are trying to use remote web driver class okay that doesn't implement the find by accessibility id because this find by accessibility id is is actually present in android driver right so so it is not related to remote web driver so so make sure that you use android driver and then the android element. so you can also give the generic so that it doesn't show any bonds so now this code will work okay whenever you are using okay whenever sorry yes so whenever you are using mobile by always make sure that you are creating an instance of android driver. let's say you are running your test on browser stack or sauce labs or any clouds they would have handled it internally otherwise it's much better that you when you create the instance you always um, make sure that you are creating it right
okay now um now we understood this is a failure and we fixed it now, uh let's go here and let's solve one more problem that is we are trying to handle ios also right that's that's how our apps are we need to test it on both android and ios in this case it's much simpler to create your ios locator like this and then this wait and click you can overlook I, I, I voluntarily haven't spoken about weight strategies yet because I have different way of implementing it. I will cover it later. Okay. Android by comma by iOS by. Okay. So we, we are passing two bytes. Okay. Now we need to know which of them, you know, whether the test running is Android or iOS. Based on that, it has to automatically pick it. Okay. So in those cases, we will create one more method that is private uh, Boolean. Uh, is Android okay, and then here we can check driver manager dot get driver dot um sorry instance of Android driver okay, so it, we can directly return it okay if it's an instance of Android driver we return true otherwise it returns false okay now so we we can distinguish here uh. Or we can create one more method um private y oh, sorry um uh, get by based on mobile platform so i give you two bytes okay you give me the by that is relevant for the test so that is if i pass android by uh of by type obviously and then the iOS by and then it's going to do something for me it's going to return it's going to check is android okay if, if it will check if it is android if it is android it's going to return android by else it's going to return iOS by 2 okay so it's much easy to to operate this way right so um so now let's go here and then let's put it here it by based on platform or you can also Put it here and then android by comma ios by once you get the by here and then you can buy based on platform and then you can say buy based on platform you go here um, yeah so it should work what is saying uh non-static method okay so the problem is we created this not static so it has to be static obviously so yeah, everything looks fine. So this will handle your stuff, okay? If I go to the uh, home screen now, uh, you, you find whatever you want. Instead of this, you call views underscore iOS. That's it. So first, it, it will try to find whether it is an Android by or iOS by based on the test. And then it will use either this or this, and then it works automatically. Suppose for in, the, in, in this case, we are running the Android test. So let's make sure this is working, okay? We go here it should launch the app and it should click on views right yeah so now the scrolling part along we will implement in the next video i will see you guys in another great video i will push all this code to the github so you all guys have a good day uh bye bye